Hi guys, so we're back on the G56 topic. Uh, thanks to a commenter, Josh Barr. Well, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, we're going to be looking at the tools required to do this, like, or at least the tools I used. You can buy them, but well, what's the fun in that? So we went ahead and made the uh, gear puller or uh, bearing splitter. Pretty basic. Uh, you just have to have your base plate here, which is a two-piece, so you can clamp the various gears. You're not actually clamping. You're just putting the slip underneath the gear or whatever it is you're pulling on, and so you can lift on it. Um, you clamp these two bits together with these guys, which I've, I have had a, quite a few laughs over them. Um, I didn't have, I thought I had 5 8 inch ready rod. Turns out I didn't have chunks long enough for this. So I ended up just, I searched around for what I had and I found these and I've been using them ever since. They work really well. Just so happens that it's a gate hinge and uh, I think this guy came from a power pole. So yeah. Um, which is that, that hokiness basically explains the whole gear puller. We also have, okay. This lip here, this is just eighth inch steel, and then we got it reinforced with uh, some quarter inch steel. reason we went with the eighth inch is because that's the thickest we could go be able to slide it in. So eighth inch isn't super strong, so we had to reinforce it with the quarter inch. We also put a reinforcement here to help prevent flexing. Because if it flexes, it's not going to put even pressure over all the gears, or the whole surface of the gear. So we got those two guys. Those are uh, pretty simple. Um, when they're together, the radius is approximately, let's get down there, let's just say four and five eighths, but as you can see that it's um, oval because the true, I'm sorry, I said radius, I meant like the distance between here and here, the diameter I guess, but the true diameter of the uh, holes, the hole I drilled, is approximately, uh, let's just say five and a half, five and three quarters, something like that. So the reason we did this is so we can clamp a wider arrangement of gears. With this tool, we can remove all the gears off the G56. Now the reverse gear is a little on the hokier side because typically you'd uh, clamp underneath the shift or uh, the uh, synchronizer plate, and that's what the Miller tool Miller Tools sells a uh, setup for being able to do this. They sell a bunch of different pullers uh, to be able to do. Basically, each gear has its own puller, um, so reverse gear has a small one to be able to go underneath the synchronizer plate. What we do to fight that, instead of using, making a different puller, we just clamp underneath the uh, reverse gear. You gotta be a little careful. You wanna make sure it's a nice uh, flat surface. Otherwise, you can chip the corners of the tooth, teeth off. But as long as, long as you're careful, there really isn't that big a deal. Um, so anyway, there's that. And then we have the studs here. Or we have nuts welded on the bottom here so we can put our studs in like that. And when you put the studs in like here, uh, you want to make sure that sometimes when you're pulling, you pull, there's a bigger gear on the top and then a smaller gear on the bottom that you're clamping on. You want to make sure the studs uh, clear the larger gear on the top. So like that, and you, you obviously put these through your top bit there, which again is super simple yet super hokey. Um, I just welded that up. It's just a chunk of, uh, one and a half inch quarter inch thick tubing with an uh, angle iron on both sides to let you slide it eh, to be able to open it up and close it again for, and for various uh, sizes of gears and whatnot. And then the, we got in the center we have a five, uh, what's that? I think that's a five eighths inch uh, nut. That way we can pull it out. If you're putting a lot of torque on it to like break something loose, you um, you don't mess with that guy because that nut is a little thin. I needed something low profile. He's a little thin so I don't want to strip him out. So you just put the torque onto these four studs, and then once you break them loose and you just have to keep pulling it about another inch or so, well then you just go with this guy because it's a lot faster. Um, so that's basically that. Um, yep, this you can see that these nuts, true to the theme, are uh, were lock nuts. I didn't have any flanged 7 16 uh, nuts. I wanted a flange that way when I put the uh, wrench on that doesn't fall the way down. Um, so I just ground the lock nut off of it, the lock nut bit. And another thing we did is so that way it's easier to install these guys here. We put a Torx into the top of them. You guys saw that in the video, putting it on. We installed the Torx on there so that way we can easily take them in and out, which makes it easier for assembling and disassembling the puller on the shaft. And then that basically that, pretty simple. Um, yeah. And then the other thing we've got is the bearing race puller. This is really hokey. I really didn't expect this to work that well, but it has. 
Um, it's just a nut on the top here with two tongs welded to it. And then when you tighten up this, uh, this stud here in the center, it wedges the tongs outward to hold the gear. Your pivot point is just the welds and the softer steel. I expected this to fail within a couple times and then I was gonna put some hinging on it. I've used this guy a couple dozen times now and he has yet, these these guys have yet to fail. So uh, when they do, I may put some hinging on them or I might just re-weld it and get it, use it a couple dozen more times. So um, pretty simple. You got the tongs on the end here. That was originally, those were softer steel, but after trying to pull a uh, bearing out of an axle, that didn't treat it so well. So what we did was we, um, used an old mower blade, put, clamped them to where they're in the right spot, clamped them together, and then put the, um, the mower blade over top, welded the mower blade in, did a bunch of grinding, welding, and whatnot, and that gives us a little higher strength steel for the tips, because those are what's gonna break off when you're pulling really hard. Um, so yeah, and then once you, you taken it out to wedge it enough, you just um, you tighten up this nut here, which then pulls up on the puller, pulling out your bearing. This guy here is just some pretty simple tubing. Um, we did have to weld a bit of steel there where the nut would go on so it doesn't uh, dimple in the softer, thinner steel here. But So we did that, and it's been treating us really good. Um, yeah, really simple setup to make. I mean, really handy, really simple, and you use this for basically any bearing race. You don't have to do it on just transmissions. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, really simple to make. It didn't take... Uh, a couple hours for this, 30 minutes for that, um, and you save a bunch of money over what uh, Miller would want for a, a set to be able to assemble a transmission. I mean, if you're a professional shop and you do a bunch of these guys, then yeah, buy the set, whatever. But if you're doing one or two, it's just, you waste a lot of money just buying the tools. Which then again, you use a lot of money just rebuilding a transmission, so what's an extra couple hundred bucks? Um, Another thing I'm going to mention, just really quick, I did not show this in any of the videos, uh, at least not yet, um, and this is to be able to spin the output shaft of the transmission. You just rebuilt the transmission, um, you want to make sure that everything shifts correctly, you just set the transmission on the bench, strap it down, and then hook, slip this guy on the output shaft, and then you just take a drill, and you, uh, you can see he's pretty uh, messed up because I, the drill was slipping a little bit because I, I was trying to work with an issue on my transmission anyway and you'll be able to spin the shaft the output shaft and go through the gears to make sure it shifts correctly um, and doesn't make any weird noises that's the issue I had with mine I was making some weird noises I uh, installed it in the truck uh, found knew that found out there was a weird noise because that's the first time I had um, installed the transmission or ran the transmission um, found out there was a weird noise pulled it out tried to figure out what the problem was thought I figured it out put it back in the truck same rear noise so I took it back out and I made this adapter so I could just start replacing parts until uh, the noise went away. So And that worked well. I was able to figure out what the problem was. No problems. So really handy to be able to make sure everything shifts and sounds and whatnot correct and wonderful without having to uh, install it in the truck, which is really handy. It's just a uh, stock output flange from a uh, G56, a two-wheel drive G256. The uh, 4x4s had the transfer case bolted to the back. The uh, two-wheel drives had this guy bolted to the back, and you just piece of eighth-inch steel here um, to span the gap, and then a stud in the center that I have the head welded to this eighth-inch bit. That get, lets me hook up to it with the drill and spin it. So, really simple, um, really handy, really helpful to have. Um, like I say, it didn't take long to build any of this. I mean, this took 15 minutes, maybe. I mean, you can just the hokiness is just spilling off of it. It's really, it's not even centered. I don't know if you could tell that, but I didn't even get it centered. I really did not expect the drill to be able to spin it, so I didn't want to spend a bunch of time on something that was going to fail. But it spun it. It's a big drill. Let me get it really quick. It's an old, bigger drill. You're not going to do this with a, a little cordless. Let me go get it. Here is the Hitachi drill. It is an older guy. I wonder if it has any specs on it left. Uh, 115 volts, 6.2 amps, 680 watts, 550 RPM. It did have a little bit of trouble trying to spin it, but it, overall it wasn't too bad. So, anywho, I hope that was helpful. Um, 
if hopefully you are now intrigued to go build your own puller and save a couple hundred bucks over doing it yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and keep wrenching.